What's up, everybody? Welcome inside Studio 34. This is the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Greg Sussman. Happy to be back. Even happier to be joined by the newly engaged Jim Sanas. What's up, Jim? It's all good, Greg. Uh, pretty fun uh, past weekend, and I'm looking forward to the WGC Mexico coming up this weekend, too. You know, a little bit different, I suppose, than, than engagement. But still, I think it's a, it's a pretty exciting thing to get going down there to Mexico with a really fun field. So I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, still engaged as well, so that's good. Um, <laughs> and ready to rock and try to win some money in DFS golf this weekend. Hopefully, you'll help me do that. We'll see. <laughs> that's that's the plan, at least. We'll see. Absolutely. The tournament, the at t WGC Mexico Championship. And we begin with one of the best players in the world. If you're paying up, why is Dustin Johnson the guy to pay up for? Yeah, I mean, when I was trying to, you know, look at the stats for this event, I was trying really hard to find a way to not use Dustin Johnson <laughs> because his finishes the past two weeks, Greg, they've been okay. 45th two weeks ago and then ninth this past week. And he got off to a really rough start in that one too. So I was like trying to find a reason not to use Dustin Johnson. So I looked at a really small sample the past 36 rounds on fantasynational.com. And even when I did that, Dustin Johnson still appeared to be the class of this field. Over that 36 round sample, he is first or fifth in the field in distance. He is ninth in approach and second in putting on POA greens, which are the greens they'll be using this week down at uh, Club de Chapultepec. So really just good across the board, still in that sample. And if you look back just before the past two events, that was when he was at Saudi International and he won that event as well. So honestly with Dustin Johnson, yes, the past two PGA Tour events, 45th and 9th, that's not going to blow you away. But he did have that win at Saudi International, and that was against a really tough field. And last week, over the final three rounds, he was basically Dustin Johnson again. So we're getting him at uh, not the highest salary on the board that it belongs to Justin Thomas. He does not have the shortest betting odds on the board either. So Dustin Johnson, I kind of think I'm going back to him this weekend, despite the fact the past two weekends maybe haven't been ideal but I think that, honestly, straight up, he is still the best golfer in this field. Never a bad time to take Dustin Johnson, even though he is coming off a bit of a rough stretch. And, hey, like you said, he's still one of the best golfers in the world. Playing in this tournament, he's an obvious selection. Another one of the best golfers in the world, someone that's even ranked higher than Dustin Johnson right now, it's Brooks Kepka. Kepka Johnson, how are you going to fit both in? Yeah, the, the the blessing here, Greg, is that Brooks Kepka is eleven thousand three hundred dollars on FanDuel, whereas Dustin Johnson's an eleven nine. Justin Thomas is twelve thousand dollars. And I think they were getting a bit of a discount on Brooks for this week because he's been, you know, off playing the Euro Tour, living his best life, enjoying the fact that he's a two time major champion now. So Brooks has been kind of off the radar for a while, and maybe the question is. Does this guy care how he does at the WGC Mexico? But honestly, the WGC Mexico is a pretty big event. As mentioned, this is a loaded field, and it's kind of the events you would expect Brooks Ke Kepka to show up for and do really well. And we could have this perception that Kepka is, you know, trying to, you know, just relax a bit before the Players' Championship and the majors roll around, but... Honestly, even since January 1st, he's been golfing a little bit and has been doing pretty well. He has golfed three times, and that does include a ninth-place finish at the Abu Dhabi HSBC Championship. Pretty good field for that one. If we look at Kepka in the larger sample, since he returned from that wrist injury last year, he has had three wins, five top fives, eight top tens in 21 events. So the upside for this guy is just insane, and you're getting that for just $11,300. He's been 26th or better in 12 of his past 13 events. So at this course, at Club de Chapultepec, I want golfers who can go long. Not many guys are going to go much longer than Brooks Kepka. I think that this could be a situation where we get uh, one of the world's best golfers at potentially lower ownership than you would normally expect because this field is so strong and because Kepka has been off the DFS radar for a little bit now. So for me personally, I want to buy back in on Kepka. There are some super cheap golfers I like for this weekend, and there is it is a no-cut event. So I can afford to take on a little bit more risk. So not going Kepka for cash games. I think that I'd rather go with someone who has been you know, more engaged on the PGA Tour recently. But I think for tournaments, it does make a lot of sense to dive in on Kepka and try to take advantage of his upside. Ah, the engaged guy dropping an engaged line here when it comes to <laughs> Brooks Kepka, who, you know, in cash games, not going in that direction. But certainly uh, in tournaments, it makes sense. And you, you mentioned how in this tournament, there's no cut. These names are going to get interesting in a bit. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we can we can take a little bit of risk, Greg. So we'll have a little fun later on. And uh, it may not end well, but we'll at least give it a shot. See what happens. Next up here in the middle tier, price is just $10,100. It's Gary Woodland. Why is he one of your favorites this weekend? Yeah, I actually like this middle tier quite a bit, Greg, because it's not just Gary Woodland, but you've also got Tommy Fleetwood in there, who is one of my favorite golfers for this weekend. Patrick Cantlay is $10,400, but you do save a little bit of money with Gary Woodland, as you mentioned, who is $10,100, and he's also a really fun option in this tier of pricing. Over the past 36 rounds per Fantasy National, Gary Woodland ranks 28th on the in the field in distance, and he's also fifth in approach, so good in the two books ball striking categories and that has led to 10 top 25 finishes in his past 12 events he has been in the top 10 in seven of his past nine and part of that has been fueled by a putter than that's better than we're normally seen from Gary Woodland so you do expect at least some regression from Gary Woodland as we get further and those finishes will not be as good as they have been recently but even when you take out the putting and just look at the ball striking numbers, Woodland still grades out really well, especially for someone who is at this salary tier at $10,100. So I think if we're talking cash games, I might prefer to find the $200 to get up to Tommy Fleetwood if I'm in this range or potentially up to Patrick Cantley at 10-4 for tournaments. I do like Francesco Molinari, who is the exact same salary as Gary Woodland as well. But Woodland has been rattling off a ton of great finishes. He has the stats to back it up. And I think that it's another good week to go at Woodland and just kind of pepper this peer in or this tier in general around ten thousand dollars. A lot to like here in this tier, as you mentioned. Gary Woodland is where we start, not where we finish, but certainly someone to target this weekend. Another player that's in this tier that makes a lot of sense is Billy Herschel. How come he's on this list, Jim? Yeah, the salary for me, Greg, I think is the biggest selling point for me on Billy Horschel because he is just $9,500. And I think if you look at his odds, his betting odds on FanDuel Sportsbook are pretty long. And normally we do want shorter odds for a golfer in this salary tier. But I think from a statistical perspective and looking at the finishes recently for Horschel, I think there is still enough there to convince me that he is a guy I would want to use in this middle tier of pricing. He's $9,500 over the past 36 rounds per Fantasy National. Horschel ranks eighth in the field in stroke skin approach. And stroke skin approach is going to be the key stat you want to look at pretty much every week because so much of so many per, the high percentage of the shots they take are on their approach shots. Horschel's graded out really well there. He's not super long off the tee, but he does enough off the tee to, you know, contend for some low scores. And over the past three events, Horschel has finished 25th, 8th, and 39th. That eighth place finish came in a full field at the Farmers Insurance Open. So Horschel can, you know, get that upside via a good finish. The floor seems pretty good as well. And Honestly, when I look at this this middle tier, around $9,500 or so, there aren't a lot of golfers who, to, who really stand out to me. So I think that Horschel is one of the guys in that tier who does bring me some safety, does bring a little bit of upside too. So I'm probably not going to go out of my way to actively target Billy Horschel this week. But it, let's say I get down to my sixth golfer and have $9,500, $9,600 available, Horschel would likely be the guy I would wind up using in that scenario. If that scenario plays out, Horschel certainly could be a big-time play this weekend. In that middle tier, he's $9,500. Lots of like when it comes to Billy Horschel. And now we get to the fun, Jim. The value <laughs> plays here this week. How Tong Lee is where we start. Why is that the play? Because he's really good, Greg. And I think that that's what I'm going to say about Hao Chong Lee, because <laughs> I, a lot of these guys we see at these WGC events, they're not on the PGA Tour very often. For Hao Chong Lee, we have not seen him since the WGC HSBC on a main slate for DFS. So he's kind of been out of sight, out of mind. But ever since that time, Hao Chong Lee has been racking up some really good finishes internationally. If we look at just his past 11 events, regardless of what tour it has been on, he has finished worse than 30 30th just once in that time. He has been second twice in that span. He also has two other fifth place finishes. So playing internationally, Hao Chong Lee has been really good. And you're getting all that for a guy whose salary is $8,900. He is a top 40 golfer in the world. He ranks sixth in distance over the past 36 rounds per Fantasy National. So again, he is a guy who can go long at a course where I really would like to get that. Now, 
if you look back at course history and you do value that, you may go back to last year and see that Hao Chong Lee was roughly 30 strokes over par, about that or so. And that could be a little bit scary. But Hao Chong Lee golfing really well right now. And I think that I'm willing to overlook how bad he was at this event last year because he's $8,900, does exactly what I want, and has been golfing well internationally. So Hao Chong Lee, $8,900. Easily my favorite play below $10,000 for this weekend. Easily your favorite play, Jim. <laughs> Hopefully it will work out and we'll win some money instead of burning it. <laughs> One final golfer to go, another value play, and we don't like him as much as we like Hao Tung Lee, but we still like him. And it's Yost Loughton. Everybody loves Yost Loughton. I would hope they do, Greg, because this guy is $7,800. At the top of the show, you asked me, Greg, how do we afford both Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kepka? And I think that Yost Lauten and How and How Tong Lee are kind of the two keys to doing so because Yost Lauten is crazy cheap, $7,800 for this weekend, and he like. Like Hao Tong Lee, he's been golfing really well internationally of late. He's been to seven events since he injured his wrist last year. He returned in October. In the seven events since then, he has finished 27th or better in six of those events. Did miss a cut in the other one, but the upside has been there for Yost Lauten in his two most recent events, uh, two recent events since January 1st for Yost Lauten. He has finished sixth at the Saudi International and third at the Abu Dhabi HSBC. We've mentioned those tournaments a couple of times here in the show because they're tournaments that have really good players, you know, like Dustin Johnson, like Brooks Kepka, and when guys like Loughton perform well there, it does open quite a few eyes. It seems like Loughton is fully over that wrist injury, seems like he is good to go, and now we get him at a low salary of $7,800. That lets you afford two studs pretty comfortably, may let you get back into that 10000 tier, get a guy like Tommy Fleetwood as well, so Loughton is a golfer I want to use pretty heavily in the lineup where I go, Stars and Scrubs, because he does stand out there. So Loughton, I think if you really need to save some salary, is going to be the, the surefire guy below $8,000. There you go, Yost Loughton, someone that's cheap, someone that's hot, and someone you need to get in your lineup. There you go, Jim. Those are the picks. I know Frank won $2.50 last week. <laughs> Let's see if I can up that this week. I appreciate the time, and let's do it again soon. Yeah, no Harold Varner the third for me to trip myself up on this week. So I think that's probably a good thing, and we'll see how it goes. And uh, these no-cut events are always pretty fun, Greg. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. Congratulations to you, sir, and uh, I'll Thank talk you. to you soon. All righty. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely. We'll take a break. When we come back, the top betting picks this week, which hopefully have more Yost Lap. <laughs> Back with you on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Greg Sussman. Davis Maddock here. Let's talk about some of the favorite bets of Davis's, uh, on Davis's card here this weekend. Any love for Yost Loughton? You know, I actually do like him. I, I'm, in general, <laughs> kind of looking towards some of the Euro guys this week because they're not going to be as popular. Their odds are, like, a little bit more juiced. And, uh, you know, Juiced Loughton, he, uh, he's a very good putter, and that definitely Definitely can come into play in these WGCs when, like, you know, you, you gain two extra strokes on a Sunday. That can be that can mean a big paycheck. All right. So we'll tell Jim you're in. I like it. Well, let's get to your top six bets of the week. And let's start with Bryson DeChambeau. What makes you like him this week as one of your favorite bets? So I am all in on Bryson DeChambeau this week. I'm I'm buying the popular narrative that this course in Mexico rewards guys who are really good at course management and maybe guys who have played this course on a golf simulator many times, which is something that Bryson owns in his private residence. And the fact that it's not a sheer bomber's track also kind of goes in his favor. But in general, uh, long irons, strokes gained approaching the green, strokes gained around the green. That's really Bryson's game. And uh, the price at, at 16 to 1, it's not great. But, uh, you know, I just think Bryson wins this tournament. I am, I will have him in all formats that you can get money down on golf this week. Bryson is my guy. A lot to love with Bryson DeChambeau this week and what he puts in to every tournament. That's why he's Davis's favorite bet. Up next, we continue on with Rafa Cabrera Bello, who finished third here just last season. Can he finish first this weekend? 
I think that he probably can. These events are generally won by more prestige golfers. And really what it is, at these WG field, WGC fields, there's about 70 to 75 guys. And uh, when you remove half the field, a lot of that win equity gets pushed up towards the top. Up. But a guy like RCB, when his game is good, when he is putting well, and when he's gaining strokes uh, approaching the green, his game is really about as good as kind of anyone else in the whole world of golf. And I like to take him when he's in good form. He's kind of a guy that I, he's a little bit of a money pit for me over the years, but uh, his strokes gained approaching the green is something that really intrigued me this week. And uh, I like to take him in good form. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I am giving a little bit of credence to the Euro guys this week, because in general, I like their prices more than their American counterparts. Fair enough. And that's a, a good explanation and why he may be a good bet at 50 to one this weekend. Up next, we go to Tony Finau, who is 33 to 1 this weekend, and the odds tell a big time story. Every time you guys have me on this show, <laughs> I just I have to I have to tout my boy Tony Finau. Everything about out his game is just like 10% worse than everyone who's the best at golf in the world. If you if you looked at his stats, he would just look like a discounted version of Justin Thomas, of Rory McIlroy. And, uh, you know, he's actually deeper in this field at 33 to 1 than he was the last two weeks on this show when I did recommend him. It's a stronger field, but the fact that there's not a cut, I like that about his game as well and I don't have any doubts about his ability to be a closer or to gain strokes on a Sunday if he is in contention so 33 to 1 if, I, if I'm going to come on and recommend him at 20 to 1 I have to come on and suggest that he's a play at 33 to 1 as well Tony Finau is your boy and I hope every week we continue to talk about Tony Finau and I'm hoping he wins soon that, that, that would be helpful <laughs> coming up next it is Louis Oosthuizen, who has three top seven finishes in his last four starts. Oosthuizen's hot. Can he continue the streak this weekend? Well, unfortunately, he's not mega hot because he missed the cut last week, but his numbers from those rounds actually suggest that he wasn't as bad as the overall performance suggested. He was still gaining strokes off the tee. He was still gaining strokes around the green. And he just uh, he putted pretty horribly. Louis is another guy kind of like RCB when the game is going well. I like to ride him. And yeah. And as referenced by the fact that he has three top seven in his last three of his last four starts, uh, when, the, when the game is going, he's going to be close to contending. And uh, Louis is also he's one of those guys who's motivated by the paycheck. So the one point seven million dollar first place here at the WGC Mexico definitely leads me to uh, to putting Louis on the card. Fair enough. Louis obviously deserves the spot, and hopefully we can ignore everything that happened in that last start and remember the three, the three before that, which were obviously much better. Another player to look at this week, and he's honestly just a much better golfer than any of these guys, is Justin Thomas, who's 9-1 to one to win this thing. Uh, finished second and fifth in his two starts previously at this event. He's one of the best golfers in the world. He makes an obvious good bet this week. So there are a couple different ways to approach short field tournaments and generally it would be picking one of the favorites and Justin actually leads the betting markets this week or it would be a more scattershot approach where you're taking some of the 40 to 1 on 50 to 1, 60 to 1 guys. I've already given away my strategy for the week where I'm going pretty heavy on Bryson at 16 to 1. But if I was not doing that, JT, I think pretty clearly not only deserves to be leading the betting markets, but I think he might even be short at 9 to 1. He's gaining in between six to eight strokes per round uh, on approach, which is just like, it's, those are absolutely unheard of numbers relative to the field, especially to be done consistently. So his game really is kind of in the best place that it's been since that torrid streak two years ago. He could have won last Sunday, if not for a couple blow up spots. And uh, I, I want to ride the wave on, on JT. I, he's not a guy to fade when the irons are hot. Fair enough. Ride the hot hand with the best player in the world, potentially in Justin Thomas. One last bet to get to, and you, it's Keegan Bradley at 120 to 1. Why is this the long shot pick of the week? So this is the exact opposite of the Justin Thomas, Bryson, DeChambeau strategy. You'd, you'd add Keegan to your card if you already had Rafa Cabrera Bale, if you already had Louie, and you were just trying to capture more of the overall field at a good return. The, the things about Keegan are you're not worried about him closing. You're more worried about the middle of the event. 
that. You're worried about him posting an 80 on Friday, but in an event where there's not a cut, that uh, it will minimize a little bit of the damage of a bad round that Keegan can always post. And, uh, you know, sort of like Finau, his numbers are just, you know, 15% worse than the best golfers in the world off the tee, uh, approaching the green, around the green. The thing that Keegan can't do is putt. But when you get him in a shorter field at 125 to 1, the, the thought process is basically if he has a good putting round, he, he's more like a 40 to 1 golfer. So it's kind of just a wager based on the idea that he's likely, more likely than not to have a good putting round at that price. Jim Nance's favorite, Keegan Bradley, gets in there on Davis's card, which means he should be on your card as well. There you have it. Not only all the DFS picks from Jim Sonis, but the six best bets on Davis Maddox's card. You know you got to put those in and win some cash. Davis, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. We'll see you next week. Tomorrow, we, you know, we'll be back with some more on the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Greg Sussman for Davis Maddock and Jim Sonis. Thanks so much for joining us.